okay so let's get it started uh first question so where where were you born where did you grow up a little bit of background uh on yourself absolutely so i'm i'm from mexico um i was born and raised in in uh, in the state of michoacan so it's the cent central west central mexico and i came here to the states back in 2004 and so i've been living here in seattle for ever since um the plan was just to I remember just to get a couple of jobs, you know, work double time, make as much money as possible and go back. And at the time I wanted to finish my, 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 my career. So, so I, I wanted to become a mechanical engineer and, uh, you know, in order to do that, I needed, I needed money. So I, I came here, but then one thing led to another and another. And then I'm like, you know, I'm just going to stay here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the things growing up? What were you excited about? Like, what were some of your hobbies that you did that kind of, you know, turned you into the person you are today? Great question. So uh, it is funny, actually, looking back, uh, I was talking to my wife and I'm like, I wonder if I had this like as, as a young age, you know, like becoming a, a business owner. Um, and and um, I, I had a, <laughs> as a kid, I had a, you could call it addiction. So I was very into video games but i and my father couldn't afford a, a a video game console so instead i would go to you know the arcades and i will spend the entire day there every day and my dad was not a fan of that so he was always like hey stop wasting time there well because i wanted to keep uh, playing and, and i had to figure it out i remember i asked the guy who owned the place is like hey will you be interested in opening another location and i'll, I'll watch the you know the location for you and you pay me a little bit of money. And I remember the guy's like, actually, how about I pay your commission and you take care of it? And I'm like, that's great. Wow. And that was like very first days that it was like, okay, you're gonna be part owner. Um, and then and then and then it was for me, it was a win-win. I'm like, wow. So I get I get to play, I get to, I get to get paid. And it was my first time to actually administer in the business because it was up to me to to administer it. So and it was, I guess, that time when I, I, I just liked the idea of having a business that um, can can essentially give you what you want. Right. And, and for me at the time, it was just the video games. I was very into video games. Not not anymore. Any, you know, any, I've tried it, but it's like, ah, they're too complicated <laughs> now. But I was, you know, Street Fighter back in the day. That was my jam. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what was your favorite? Street yeah, Fighter. Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, man. They, they, I grew up with those games. <laughs> it's crazy because my nephews are even playing Mortal Kombat now, and it's been along it, around for so long, and they just keep remaking it and just making it better and making it better. It's true, you know. My my kid, you know, brought bought the new ones. I'm like, wow, well, this is like way too much, like 3D and and you know, like more, better yeah. better vehicles. <laughs> so, yeah, I look, it was just it was just the one joystick and two buttons back. Two and buttons. Forth. And, and now it's everything. Very, now you have actually VR stuff, and uh, it's definitely things things have changed with it, when it comes to the the gaming industry. A lot of a lot of good stuff, but um, yeah, I guess so. That was my my thing, you know, when I was was when I was young, when I was young, you know, like in my in my early teens, and um, and then when I came here, right, I I, I didn't think about opening a business one because I didn't speak the language at the time. And number two, I didn't really understand like uh, the legalities or, 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 or of running a business, and I just didn't want to learn about it. Um, it was more like um, uh, it was my my wife's idea, honestly. So so it, all these businesses thanks to my my wife because she she was working, she was cleaning houses for a, for a lady, and I was I was working as a car salesman, you know, selling cars. And I actually enjoy that job because I would work from a computer, you know, making phone calls, you know, responding emails. And I was really, really into that. Um, and, you know, I had a health insurance, dental, you know, all the benefits that you can think of. And I was, I was, I was happy with that. And my wife was like, Chris, I've been working with this company and, you know, it's, they're making a lot of money we can definitely do this ourselves. And I'm like, I remember that the, the answer was like, no way. Uh, <laughs> cleaning, it just didn't sound it, uh, like a, like an attractive business. And I guess two things, it was because, you know, because I'm a guy and I'm like, I just didn't want to be involved in, in cleaning. And, and number two, I never had a business here. So I was like, I don't know. 
But I'm glad that she planted the seed, though, because after after she tells me this, my, my response was no. I was like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> but, but then I will go to work, and I'm like, what if we give it a shot, right? What if? Um, and um, I remember I told her, listen, let's try. I'm going to post some ads on Craigslist. At the time, I didn't know anything. I mean, Craigslist was free at the time. Now they charge you, but... At the time, it was completely free. And I said, listen, I'll post some ads on Craigslist. I'll answer the phone calls because my wife didn't speak English at the time. And I said, and, and then do you do the jobs? How's that sound? And she's like, let's do it. And Michael, I was blown away. Um, this was 2015, January 2015. So actually, no, the conversation we had, it was in December. And then in January, that's why I like, okay, well, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Um, Three months later, this is March, uh, March, you know, towards the end of March, I, you know, I didn't have a CRM or booking or nothing. It was under the table, you right. know, getting paid cash and, 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 and right. stuff. And paperwork on the side that just, uh -huh. very, very informal business. It was not even a business. It was literally no license or nothing, but people were buying the service and it was my, my wife and her best friend who were doing the cleanings at the time. And in March, I remember I made a spreadsheet and I started adding, you know, how much we were charging Java job. And man, I was blown away. I, at, at the time she had brought in $18,000, my, my job dropped. And I'm like, wow. And most of it was profit because, you know, we didn't have overhead. Uh, right. We had to pay, you know, the one employee, but most of it was, was, was for her. And that was like, when I'm like, you know what, this business it's growing, it's making money, and if we make it formally like a business, I think we can really take off. And so it was scary, though, because remember, I had full benefits, 401k, the, the full meal, you know, and, and it was very comfortable. That. And, and leaving that for a maybe, it was not easy. Right. Um, it was like, what if it doesn't work? And funny thing, I guess... Uh, Sometimes, you know, not everything works perfectly at the beginning. Um, I quit. I remember I said, you know, guys, here's my two weeks. I'm leaving. I'm going to start a business. Or like, what business? Like cleaning businesses? Like, everybody's like, you're crazy, dude. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I think I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full. Well, uh, it was more. At that month that when I quit, we got our very first bad review of, of the very first, you know, customer that didn't pay us. So everything started actually going south. And mm -hmm. I remember, what did I do? Oh, my God. And I was this close to actually call my boss. I was like, you know what? I'm sorry. Can I, I get my back? <laughs> and, uh, but we stuck to it. You know, like, I guess there are little tests uh, that you have to go through. Um, and, then, and then I'm like, you know what? Let's just, let's just keep doing it. And, and from there, it was just, just a matter of every time that we, we get a a complaint or a bad review or something, what can we do so it doesn't happen again, right? It was always that. Well, let's, 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 let's fix it. Learning. Just learning. Uh, learning. And, and, and I started, you know, like just, just optimizing little by little. Uh, and, um, and, and then, yeah, so, you know, at, at the time, this is 2015. So Booking Call, I don't think it was, it was out there. You guys are already in business, but they were not selling the software as it is. It, it was not actually, it was just for my partner, uh, Philip, for his cleaning service, King of Maids. He had this built, not what it is today, but the baby, what it became was originally for King of Maids. And, you know, he actually had random cleaning service owners reaching out to him saying, hey, I come across your website. What software do you use? And he said, it, it, it's my own. And they were basically begging to pay him for it and he was like no 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 and then finally sat down and um with our other partner vivek uh -huh. they decided to create it into a software but make it not just for cleaning but for everything anything service mm -hmm. related so it's it's come a long way for sure it's from, so from the cool. early days yes you know it is this is this is how i found out actually about the king of May still because um at the time, you know, I was like growing. I'm like, you know, there was no really information. There was no courses back then. There was nothing on YouTube. It was literally just figure it out on your own. And 
you know what I what I did and how I actually found you guys. He was like, let me look for other big metro areas and see what other cleaning businesses are doing. And I remember I went to New York, uh, Houston, Chicago, and then when I said Chicago, like the king of maze, and you already have locations in in multiple places. Yes, was he, like, I, I, was never, I was never a part of King of Maids. Uh, no. that, was, that was another friend of ours um, from high school. So it was them that started it. And then I joined uh, with Philip on other business ventures during the time before this started. And then 2017, he bought his other partner out for the King of Maids. And then we decided to all do this as one. Um but yeah, he, he was in he's Chicago, Houston, San Antonio, uh-huh. Dallas, all over the place. It was it was big, and I'm like, wow, like how do you how do you guys are managing so many locations, right? And I'm like, wow, but you guys were not selling Booking Koala. It was literally you guys use website and you had multiple locations. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was really into like how can I make something similar to what you guys have? And I started, you know researching you know uh quote forms or or for me it was like a quote form it was not an online booking form. and at the time i run into a a post on reddit and 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 this guy was uh an, another company um you know you're you're, you're maybe familiar with it but launch 27 yes. so there was a, there was a post about this guy who he was he's in washington dc and he had a Pretty much laid out how he was able to essentially become a, a cleaning owner without, without without doing the cleanings. For me, I was like, "What? Like I'm actually doing the cleanings? Like how can you actually step out and subcontract the, the jobs right. and then you become uh, the middleman?" So I saw that he was selling uh, Launch Twenty Seven. Um, and I remember I bought it on the spot. I was like, let me, let me get it. I, 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 it was very revolutionary, you know, having a booking form, especially on a, on a, on an industry like cleaning. Absolutely. Um, so I bought it and I, I used that for, for close to two years. I, I was, I was using it, um, well, but then the owner sold the company to another, another owner and this new ownership, they're like, guys, we're going to increase the prices. That was okay for me. I was like, okay, I'll pay it because it's working. But then what I didn't like, it was that they were forcing the users to stop using the Stripe and they were going to use their own payment processor. That was a big no-no for me because I had asked for a, I had a loan with a Stripe, you know, when they give you like these cash advances and, and in order to pay it back, you had to run the transactions through them. And I'm like, if, if they force me to leave, how am I going to pay Stripe? So that's when I'm like, I need to find something else. And Booking Quala came about. And um, and I think I also, st- I spoke with Meredith, I remember. She actually did a demo with me. She yep. did a demo. And, and then the, the thing was missing was the calendar. I'm like, oh, no, I need the calendar. So I was like really stuck. I was really stuck in between, uh, you know, and I'm like, I need to figure out. And you guys had Stripe integration. So I was like, Guys, please make it happen. And it was, I guess, the right time because you uh, you guys sent an email like, now we have a calendar view. I was like, thank you, guys. Thank you. That so, I, I vaguely remember um, that, but it honestly could have been within a week to two where it was that in-between point where we were figuring out, are we going to do it? Yes. Okay. How long is it going to take? And it just, it, it came quick. So exactly. it's, it's great that, you know, you're still with us. You were here from basically the beginning because the idea to start the business was uh, 2017. That's when book the name and everything started. And then we launched officially to the public. I believe it was Father's Day of 2018. Wow. I think that's, that's when I, uh, when I approached you guys. And, and so guy my friend from there it was it was i was i was hooked because your software had so much better features by far um for example i was i was missing money on launching seven because you know the booking form 
you know, it was like bedrooms and bathrooms, and then the deep cleans or move outs were were an extra. So you had to select as an extra. But and you know, some jobs are too bigger than others. When I saw you guys, you had actually categories. So I can create a, a price category for standard, a price category for move out, and a deep clean. So it was so much better. I was like, man, this is it. So I started adding even, you know, uh, I, I changed my pricing structure a little bit to fully to fully really uh, take advantage of, of the new features that you had. Um, and then the subcontracting part of it, and, you know, how easy it was able to, to just assign the yeah. jobs. I was like, this is it. Um, and then since it, everything. It, it just, it just kept growing, growing, um, you know, in, in, Funny story. So I, the business is really growing, like 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 tremendous. Uh, and I made a mistake. I made a terrible mistake as a as a as a as an adult. So so you know the business is growing. The sales is it's it's continually moving up, and making good profits. Um, and then a friend of mine tells me, "Hey, Chris, um, there's a location. Um, we can start a restaurant. Um." we need to partner together and open a restaurant. Honestly, I was just excited. I'm like, sure, let's just start another business. One business is making me money. Two businesses is going to make me more money. Yeah. Well, that was a big lesson for me. Like, you know, one business has nothing to do with the other. This one, it was more complicated. You know, we had sales tax, um, you know, multiple uh, employees. And it was a totally different uh, business and I was not ready for it. So all I did, it was distracting me from the cleaning business. I really focused on trying to make the restaurant work. It didn't. And all I did was just dig in a, a deep hole, you know, like I was using my credit cards, loans of credit, just to keep that business afloat, grabbing from my cleaning business to pay the restaurant, hoping that it would turn around. Right. And it never did. So unfortunately, I had to close it down. And because I had leases, you know, has a five-year lease on the place. Um, you know, vendors, you know, I, 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 I was up to here on that and I had to file for bankruptcy. That was a hard pillow to swallow, but, um, you know, God really have, gave me a hand here. He's like, dude, um, I remember I went to bankruptcy and, and, and so I had to get, get, get rid of the restaurant completely, but the cleaning, you know, there's really no assets. You know, we, we provide a service. Yep. So I was able to keep the cleaning business and then wipe out the, the debt completely. And because the business, again, the cleaning business, I was able to get back on my feet and get out of that. But then COVID happened. <laughs> and you're like, you got to be kidding me. Yep, good old uh, again, and so we literally lost everything. Uh, oh, again, like overnight. It was not, I remember, I'm sure you remember this, but... We were told that we were had to close for two weeks. It was a shutdown for two weeks, and it's going to get back to normal. Two weeks turned into four weeks, into a month. And now we're really hurting because, one, customers didn't want to sell their house. And it was understandable because they were afraid of getting sick. Cleaners, also, we don't want to work because we don't want to get sick. And I'm like, ouch, we're really back to zero again. Um. And look, locally, you know, the governor here in, in Washington, um, so cleaning services were not considered essential when, when they originally they shut everything down. But on July mm. of, of, of 2020, then the governor was like, you know what, I'm going to make another list of essential business. And then cleaning was one of them. Whew. From there, the business, you start taking off again, but, but like at incredible speed. Like it seemed like everybody wanted their home clean. And but now I was with no employees. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get back to clean again. So I had to do that. Uh, you know, we 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 clean uh, for quite a while and start hiring, hiring, and nobody wanted to still hire. So I had to raise the prices so I can pay more of my cleaners. And and I found like kind of I guess like the the sweet spot. You know, that I was able to to charge more, but but and still grow. And I was able to pay more to my cleaners, and that was able to attract more people. And then from there, we really scale super, super fast. Um, just to give you an idea, you know, right before COVID, so in 2019, we had closed, uh, we had made $600,000 total for the year. And 
And then, 2019 revenue. 2019 revenue, uh-huh. And okay. then 2020, uh, we did, I think less. I think we did like 500, 500,000. And but then tw- just to stop you real quick, you only have Queen Bee Cleaning, correct? That's right. And it's only the, or you only have the one location in Seattle. No other. Yeah. No so other one. In 2019, Queen Bee Cleaning did the 600K in revenue just in Seattle. Just in Seattle. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. And then, and then, and then COVID, you know, hits and then we, 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 we slow down and then we, I think we did a close to 600 again on 2020. Um, but then, you know, the business was already like, like, like coming in at, at a fast speed. Uh, 2021, it really takes off. Uh, we, towards the end of, of, of the year of 21, we did 1.4 million. I mean, it was a big jump from like 600 to almost three times the size. Amazing. It, it was amazing. Honestly, I was like, wow. Um, really, really, uh, I guess, lucky. And, and a lot of business went down, like didn't keep up. You know, they decided to shut down. And I think that was also a factor that, you know, only the businesses that stayed open, when the business came back, you know, you were really taking on everything. You know, everything was just coming your way. Yeah. And 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 and, and then from there, you know, it just started getting more and more busy and, and uh, and here we are. So so it, it it's certainly been a a roller coaster, right? And that's business. Business is always it's up or down. It's never it's never steps just going up. There will it's be more before you go down. Exactly, it's very predictable. You know, I think any business is predictable because you know it's, it's not something that you really have full control. I mean, you can do as much as you can, but there's you're dealing with people, customers, you're dealing with employees, subcontractors. So there's many variables, and and then. You know, something you know, I think everything is going perfect, and then boom, you, you like something happens, and then you're like, ah, back again. You know, like you know, fixing mistakes or or whatnot. But it's it's definitely you know uh, a great experience. You know, the more the more mistakes you make, the better you become because you Absolutely. know like, it's, it's just part of the learning process. And like you experienced already, that when you gave your full attention to Queen B it was it was growing but the moment you kind of took that part of your attention and gave half of it to a new business it starts it starts going you know queen b goes down and then if you have more trust with the new business then it's everything piles on so exactly yeah it's you know it's one thing i learned like we 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 can multitask i mean you can if you have systems in place, right? But if, if you're really new and you're really on the grow stages, I will certainly recommend anyone just focus on one thing. You're gonna get the most amount of return with without going crazy. Absolutely. Um, and that's what happened with me and Philip when we were starting uh together just in business in general. We we had a, a separate marketing company that we were doing, and then we did product companies and other things, and we were trying to do too many things at once all together. And at that point, uh, him and Vivek were speaking about doing this. So then Mm -hmm. he sat me down. We actually lived together. Me and Philip were high school. You know, we were best friends in high school. And then uh, we both kind of went separate ways. I was dating somebody at the time. And he went into business here uh, doing King of Maids. So over time, we just got, you know, brought back together. Um, and, you know, time is everything. Timing, yes. especially. Um, like you said, with COVID, we were after that was almost a, it was going to be a two year mark for us. And we were, you know, we were growing steadily at that point. Um, and then COVID hit, we flattened out. And then we went down and I, you know, during the week, Monday through Friday, I was fully here. And then Friday nights, Saturday and Sundays, I was delivering for a restaurant um, in the suburbs of Chicago, just, huh? to, you know, just to get going up and make money and, you know, keep going forward. So mm-hmm. we're just like you blessed that everything is going back and, you know, everything is I wouldn't say going back to normal. It's a new normal. It's, it's a new normal. It's a new that's normal. A good, that's a good way to put it. 
a hundred percent. Um, next question here. Were either of your parents business owners growing up? Did you have anybody in your family that was a business owner or that you kind of, you know, looked after and said, you know what, I kind of want to be like that person? No, you know, that's a, that's a good question. So my, my, my dad, you know, he, he had his own, you know, we, I grew up on a farm. So my dad had, you know, uh, cornfields and, and apple orchards. We had, or, we had apples, peaches, uh, pears. Uh, and corn and cattle. We had cattle. So my, I guess you could call that a business, but it was not really like a business. It was more, more like just, just to, just to get you going, you know, get make enough money just to support the family. My mom, on the other hand, she, she was a housewife. You know, like in Mexico, it was very, very common that the, the the wife is just you know taking care of the family in taking care of the house, and and and, and my dad was just you know working on the field. And so no, I I, I didn't really had a, a role model that I could follow. Um, I do remember that my my mom used to tell me that my my grandma, so her mom, she she used to own businesses, you know, like like grocery stores and and uh, and some other small businesses. But I never met her, so I guess my mom said like, oh, you got you know the you know my mom's uh, uh, you know entrepreneur side. I'm like, I, I wish I would have met her because I you know she she when I was born she was already uh, dead. So, uh, but no, I guess. It, it's 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 uh, I, I consider myself lucky, you know. We're nine nine brothers, so a big family. We actually used to be eleven, but but two 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 passed away when they were you know like actually during birth, and um and then after that we were like nine siblings, and all of them, you know, they some are teachers, you know, school teachers. Um, others a mechanic, you know, he he fixes cars. So actually, two mechanics. One guy is like totally they're like they're just normal jobs. Um, I was the only guy that uh, decided to open a business, and uh, yeah, it was just I guess uh, I'm glad you know really I and it's funny I don't know if you noticed this. Um, when I start a business, I see that this is actually a great way to start making your own, having your own time, actually having control of your of your decisions. And I will tell my brothers, hey, let's start a business, and they were like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so and, and it's like why is that you know why some people are, are prone to or not or, you know fear, fear fearless of starting a business and some other people just like to be uh more stable like have a, a secure job and right. i guess it's like how we are wired a little different yeah absolutely so i mean you said it exactly nobody really in my family ever owned a business my dad was been in real estate for 30 plus years so it's kind of the similar he doesn't have a boss you know he's his own boss but at the same time not fully like your own business so just mm -hmm. like you said people are wired differently some you know can't see themselves working for somebody else they want to go out get it other people work for other places mm -hmm. as long as they're happy that's all that matters Being that's happy. Really, it's really true so when did you what what year do you roughly date did you finally would you say early was it mid 2000s that you started queen queen b or was it 2015 2015 so so it was so it was 2014 so it was the end it was it was on 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 christmas on christmas week when my wife said like hey, we stopped the pop, the cleaning company i'm like i don't know <laughs> and i don't know but um but i was like Let's, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. So it was, um, and it was not officially. So they didn't open a LLC, nothing. Uh, all I did, I posted some Amazon Craigslist. I put my phone number and I will take the calls. No website, no nothing. It was until March when I saw the money that she was making. I'm like, we definitely need to get an LLC and insurance so we can actually create this as a business. I didn't even know what I was doing, honestly. I, um, uh, the, the 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 company name was not even Queen Bee Cleaning. I remember it was like Mendoza's Cleaning, you know, my wife's last name. And after that, I was like, no, 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 no. Let's make it something that is, you know, easy to remember. Uh, and and so 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 and it caters, you know, that to the to the type of customers that I want. So I was like, how? What name? Like, a bee. Bees always working, you know. They're cleaning. They're always like, you know, like Queen Bee Cleaning. That's gonna be it. And so I changed the name, uh, and then and then yeah. So it was 2015 when 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 all this had started happening. 
Excellent. Uh, and then I guess you kind of already answered it a little bit, but money wise, not when not when you were posting on Craigslist, because again, basically free, you know, free Craigslist posts, your own phone number. So basically mm -hmm. whatever you pay for your phone bill at that month is what you were and some of the supplies for your wife. But exactly. when you when you fully incorporated and got all the paperwork and Queen Bee was, you know, started, what was your initial cost to start up? Yeah, great question. So at the time I had a big truck and obviously it was not a good idea to be driving a, a eight cylinder truck around because that, you know, the gas would have just, just kill me. So I remember I sold it. I sold that truck and I said, okay, we need a, 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 a more of a gas zipper car, okay. right? And so I sold the truck and I bought a Honda Accord. So if I put that into initial cost, so it was a $3,000 Honda Accord. Um, and then a vacuum. I think that was one of the also as expensive, uh, uh, you know, items. I, I think I spent a, a close to 5000 just to get it all fully. So business cars, some some uniforms, so it looks good, uh, so cleaning supplies and the car. So I guess you know it, it, it was it was uh, it was it was five thousand dollars, but looking back, you know, if, obviously if we remove the car, two thousand dollars, that's all we took that you know to get us to get us going. Okay, yeah. So basically, if you already had the car, I wouldn't count that just because exactly. you already had it. So about two thousand dollars, which is mm -hmm. not not much mm -hmm. for to start yeah, compared to other businesses. Like if you had a product business, tens of thousands, if not hundreds. If, mm -hmm. Especially if you're starting from just an idea that's not out there with trial exactly. and um, patents and everything this, else. This, this business is really low end. I think, honestly, looking back, it's not hard at all. Like all you need to do is 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 it's invest a little bit, right? Get some supplies. Even one person, I remember, because we were making good money by ourselves without even. I'm not thinking, you know, I'm going to grow to millions of dollars. I was just like, if I can make enough just to feed us, I'm happy. Um, you know, and between my wife and on our first employee, Mary Luz, and, and myself, I mean, we were close to making $25,000 a month, you know, and, and paying her good. We were paying ourselves good. I was like, man, I'm happy, man. I'm I'm good. But, you know, the business kept growing, growing. I'm like, well, let's start hiring more people, more people. But honestly, this is one of the easiest business to start. You know, like I mentioned earlier, the restaurant, it was not cheap. You know, I, I think I spent 60000 or close to, close to 80000 between 68 and I remember the, the, the number, just to get started. You know, buying supplies, buying the food, buying, you know, fixing up the location. Um, and then the return was never there. You know, it was a very high end, uh, you know, cost to entry. And then the, the margins of a restaurant is very thin, very thin. Cleaning, on the other hand, very easy to get going. You need a couple of softwares, you're booking Koala, a phone system so you can make phone calls, a CRM maybe if you need to, uh, you know, some, do some marketing. That's it. You know, your your fixed costs are under $500, honestly. Anybody can start this. Uh, and, and then there's plenty of business uh, out there, you know. Um, even if you start, you know, when I get people that approach me like, hey, Chris, you think it's too much competition? I'm like, no, nope. there's literally you can start a cleaning business tomorrow and you get your first customer this week. I and, kid you not. Well, because there's a, not only is there people who always, you know, not many people like cleaning. I'm <laughs> I'm one of them. I don't. <laughs> um, so with that being said, not so every customer that uses you is going to be lifelong. They might, right. for whatever reason, they might not, whether the cleaner, the way the cleaner cleaned, any, for whatever reason, they'll go to the next competition. And if they mm -hmm. don't like them, they're going to keep going. So until they find the right one. And that's how it is. With that's cleaning, exactly. There's so many, so many ways that you can just get customers. And then from there, if your business is a little different than the next cleaning company, you could still make more money in those ways. Absolutely. So you already touched a little bit about your past, but did you, with your experience and background, did you never went to school? Did you go to school? 
um if you did major or anything what was that like no so 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 okay so um i i finished high school um and then i uh i wanted to become i really saw i remember at the time i, I saw myself you know working in the in the steel industry so in, in the state that i am from there's a metallurgic plan very big and and, and during high school, you know, when you're like, you know, you're gonna about to choose your major, my my one of my teachers, he he was a mechanical engineer, and he told me like, oh Chris, this is one industry that you definitely need to get in. You know, you're gonna make a lot of money if you become an engineer. I'm like, I'm sold. Uh, for me, it was just like money, and I, I want to make as much as possible. And um, I finished high school, and I met my wife. <laughs> At the time, so she she was already in in in, in university, and I was graduating from uh, from from high school. We started dating, and next thing you know, there's a baby coming. You know, I got to my dad, and I said, "Hey, dad, you know, like I don't think I'm gonna be able to to continue school because guess what? I got my girlfriend pregnant." And I'm thinking he's gonna like beat the crap out of me because he's like very old school. And to my surprise, no, he's like, "Well." um, what are you gonna do? And I'm like, honestly, I don't know. He's like, well, the best thing you can do is finish your school. It's like you're really gonna have to do this. For one, my my my, my dad's concern it was this one. So if you notice, I don't have a, a left hand, well, fingers. When I was a kid, I was four years old. I saw some of, some of my cousins were playing with fireworks at the time, and. I was just a sneaky kid, you know, like I went and, and grabbed one of the big ones, you know, the biggest one I found. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I went to my my grandma, my dad's mom um, uh, kitchen. And then uh, I literally just put the, you know, the firework there and then and it blew up in my hand. Oh my and uh, so, you know, growing up, my dad was always like, hey, you know, go to school. You, you know, you're going to have limitations. Um, when it comes to, you know, do physical work, you know, remember like we had a farm. So he was like, no, you know, it's just focus on school, focus on the school, focus on school. And I'm like, okay, I'll focus on the school. But then, you know, fast forward to when I was 18, I said that, you know, I'm sorry, but, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to continue because I have a, I have a, a kid coming. And he's like, no, I, I'm, I'm going to help you. He's like, you really, your best shot is to finish school. So I'll tell you what. If your girlfriend wants to live here in the house with us, I'll help you, and then I'll I'll still pay you, you know your uh your 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 college. I was like, that thank you, I I appreciate it. Let's I I I take you up on the offer. However, he tells me like, however, don't have more kids. I'll help you with one, but don't have more. Okay, deal. So I actually started going to school. Mm. My firstborn, you know, it's you know, it's 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 uh, he arrives in the world, and my wife and I were actually using protection. You know, like uh, she she went to to the doctor, and and uh, we really didn't want to have more kids. And I guess you know when 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 really the the universe really tells like no, that's not the plan. <laughs> um, literally right after she, you know, my firstborn, she gets pregnant again. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, and I remember I told my dad, oh, dad, well. I'm sorry. We we I'm, I didn't even know what to tell him. I said, "Listen, we we went to the doctor. We were we were you know protecting ourselves to not to have more kids, and she's pregnant again." And uh, to my surprise, my dad says again, mm, "Like I will still help you, <laughs> please." And then he remembers. He's like, "Cut that shit off!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> like okay deal so still going to school but then something happened in my in my in my mind you know my my, my dad was already like you know all 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 at the time he's like 60 plus mid 60s and i have nine brothers and and they're all you know older than me so I'm, i was the youngest and you know i'll see my my brothers who say you know like i don't think this is right man like you know, like my dad shouldn't be working as hard anymore like it's this is your mistake. You need to take care of it. And I'm like, you're right. You know, I don't think my dad should be, you know, 
taking care of this. It's, it's, it was my decisions. I, I made this. So I will, I will, I will take care of this. And, and that's when I'm like, you know what? The only option for me was to come to the United States. Um, and, and the, the original plan was like, I'm just going to go there. I'm going to work two jobs. I'm going to get paid X amount of dollars. And I will convert that into Mexican pesos. That's going to be a lot of money. And I'm going to be able to go back and finish my degree. Uh, but no, you know, uh, I guess I didn't do the math correctly because <laughs> it's funny. Uh, you know, me being in Mexico, I remember I said, what is the minimum wage in the United States? And I remember I saw uh, an article saying, you know, like, oh, it depends, but it's about $5 an hour. This is 2004. And I'm like, okay, $5 an hour times 10 pesos. So that's 50 pesos. And I'm like, easy. I can get two jobs, get two, you know, two. You know, I was just being conservative. I say, if I get two jobs at minimum wage, because I have no experience in anything, if I work my, my ass off for two years, I'm going to make able to save enough money so I can come back and then finish my degree. Well, I was not thinking about rent. I was not thinking about food. <laughs> and as we know, you know, the most expense, you know, the biggest expense we have in America is really the the the, the rent, you know, like your, your cost of living. That yeah. really takes half of your paycheck. Then the second one is food. And then you really not end up with that much. So I was like, ah, oh, when I got here, I was like, man, I, where is the money going? Like, <laughs> and two years in, I was uh, I was here. My wife and my kids were in Mexico, and and I remember like, man, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make enough money so I can go back. So I called my wife and I said, hey, uh, would you be interested in coming here with the kids? And he's like, she's like, definitely. So I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. So they came, and uh, and, and still, you know. Honestly, I'm still thinking about let's just be together here, work between both of us two more years, make as much money as possible, and then go back. But um, one of the things that uh, um, I guess I was I was I was really lucky to have the kids here. My oldest son was diagnosed with autism, so autism is very you know now it's more common. I I think we all know someone or who 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 has someone with autism. But yeah. at the time, very new. In Mexico, remember, I remember the, the doctor said, hey, um, there's no really treatments, nothing you can do. It's just, just, just that's just how they are. So the only thing you're going to do is give him as much support as you can and try to find some speech therapy because he was not a, non, a non-verbal kid. So, and then the doctor said, your best chance is going to be in America. I was like, okay. Uh, they come here. And yeah, you know, uh, uh, the same school when I, when my kid was enrolled, they were like, okay, we we need to send them to other doctors, and and all the all the next thing you know, there's a child the children's hospital here in Seattle. They had a program for for kids with autism, and they were actually looking for for candidates because they were gonna do a study. And to my surprise, I I enrolled, I brought my kid into the study, and little did I know I was gonna get paid. So you're like, what? Like you gonna pay me? So I can have my kids like, oh, okay. So we took him there in um, uh, amazing, amazing organization. And actually, uh, and, you know, if, if you go to my website, we donate, a, 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 you know, a, a 1% of our net revenue to, to the children's hospital because thanks to them, you know, my kid is actually graduating from, from college this year. So he's a major in, in film production. Um, and he was all thanks to that hospital that helped us, you know, when, when, when he that's was amazing. That's, mm-hmm. that's truly amazing. It, it really is. You know, looking back, I'm like, I, I met I met the right people at the right time. And, 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 and they were really like helping us, you know, they were like, Hey, we're going to give you a speech therapist. And then we're going to give you this trial, you know, medicine. And then we're going to give him uh, social skills uh, classes. Um, He grew up and, and then he started, you know, I, I just kind of growing out of it. So r- right now, if you if you see him, you probably don't think he has autism. But uh, at the time when he was a kid, you know, nonverbal, very aggressive with other kids. Um, but now it's a normal adult. Uh, uh, and 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 it was really thanks to that, you know, hospital. So this is how we we give back, right? So there's like more more there's more people with autism nowadays, and unfortunately, there's not enough. Um, uh, positions for them to be placed, you know, to become independent. 
Right. And, and, it's, the, and resources, it's, the resources aren't there. The resources, exactly. So I was like, it was, that was one of my missions, you know, when I, we start seeing the money, I'm like, you know what, we need to give back to them. You know, they will really help us with, with one big uh, uh, burden that we have, you know, uses, you know, uh, my kid didn't have any options. And thanks to them, the options were available. And and so that's how we, we essentially give thanks to them. That's amazing. That is, that's amazing. And everybody's ha- healthy in your family now and everybody's doing well. So that's... Everybody's doing well. So that's it's great. A, 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 a crazy roller coaster, right? But uh, like I said, I think, you know, really... Um, you know, God put me the right people at the right time, and 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 so I was able to just take action, right? That's I'll take action, and then I start I start really giving the support that he needed, and here we are. Perfect. So now, just going a little bit more focused towards uh, Queen Bee and how you kind of run things. What your hiring funnel when you're hiring? Uh, whether it be office staff, if you have any, or primarily your providers, your cleaners. Um, we call them providers just because not necessarily yep. booking koalas for everybody. So not just cleaning right. services. So your providers who provide that service. What does your hiring funnel look like? Your best practices, uh, kind of things like that. Great question. So so we have... So I, I work with employees. So my company here, it's it's a it's a has a hybrid model. So I have employees, but I also have subcontractors. And this is what I love about Booking Quala because it allows me to do this, right? Uh and and so the hiring funnel, it's it's pretty pretty simple. So the way we do it is is uh we we recruit in these two these two platforms. It really works for me very well. It's uh indeed, that's one, and then number two is Craigslist. Um, these two platforms, this is where we, we offer the jobs and we send them to, a uh, it's, it's, a, I guess you can call it a funnel. So it's a funnel where we say, Hey, we, we're very open on how this thing works. So I say, Hey, you're going to get 50% of, of the job. You take the jobs on your own up to you. And all you, we ask you is you have experience in the industry at least one year. And then now you have your own supplies. Um, and then if they decide to, to apply, you know, they, they, they start in the funnel In the funnel, I ask him, I have three images. What would you, how would you clean this oven? And I have a picture of a horrible oven, horrible. And I'm like, if you don't know how to clean, you probably are not going to know how to clean that. So, you know, I have this little picture and say, how would you clean this oven? And then they have to type it, you know, I would use, you know, oven cleaner or whatever. Second question, how would you clean this shower door? And it's a shower that is like filthy, the same thing. And then number three, how would you clean a, a, a fan? And what tools will you use? These three questions uh, really allow me to filter the people who really don't know how to clean. Because, you know, this is the problem I had. Before I had this funnel, I had a lot of applicants because cleaning sounds like an easy job. And mm-hmm. it really is. But it's not for everyone. It's it's uh it's it's very very labor intensive, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're not gonna like it. And and so I was like, how can I filter people who, who just want a job? They just want a job, and they don't really want to to do a good job. They just they just want to apply. And I had these questions, and then from there I was able to really filter people that don't know what they're doing. And if they answer correctly, I can see the response, right? I say, okay, this person answered correctly. Let me talk to them. So they answer correctly. They then I get a notification and I call them and say, and I explain them a little bit, just again, just be full transparent. I think this is one of the things a lot of people drop the ball. Uh, if you're not telling them exactly what they're getting into, you know, there's no clear expectations, and then you have a lot of churn. You know, they come and they go, they come and they go. Be transparent. They tell them exactly what it is about. Hey, listen, hey, you're going to start here. You know, we're going to pay you 50% to start. If you are good and you're a great provider that, you know, knows what you're doing, I'll pay you up to 60, up to 70, right? If if you're one of those persons that just a doer, never give me problems, I'll pay you more. But but this is how we work. Um, and, and and so that's how we do it, right? It's 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 very simple. Uh, nothing, nothing complicated. It's more like just to prefil- filter 
of filter the people who are really don't know how to. Same thing with the uh, the office staff. Um, I, I have also a, a similar funnel for people who answers the phone. Um, I, so I work with VAs. I remember having a VA was like a, something crazy for me. Um, but I need, you know, I needed help, uh, you know, growing a business, you know, especially in this industry, like emails, phone calls, bookings, cancellations, running credit cards. It's a lot of stuff going on. Any issues? And, uh, Any issues that? Uh, Somehow, uh, putting fires. Somebody gets hurt. A, cl a cleaner gets hurt, or anything else. Right. It's scramble. Uh -huh. I had to scramble and send someone else, and and then all these moving pieces. And I needed help, and so at the time, I I I wanted something, and, you know. And I heard about virtual assistants, but I was like, How do you train them? How do you pay them? What if they steal my credit card numbers? Right? There's a lot of fears, and like. What if I create the same funnel that I have for my cleaners and they just make it for virtual assistants? And so the little funnel, like, hey, how would what would you do if a customer is angry and tells you that, 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 you know, like more the like most common scenarios? So I started running ads on 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 Upwork. And then uh, uh I was able to find a fantastic VA. She's she really is it's amazing. Her name is Sheena. Sheena, when she came into my company, I remember I said, Sheena. Have you worked in any service industry jobs? I'm like, no. Nope. Like, what have you done before? She's like, I used to work uh, for, for a bank. And I was in charge of the credit card uh, fraud department, you know, like actually helping people with 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 bogus claims. And I'm like, okay, that's perfect. Because you're you you can you deal with conflict, right? So you know how to calm people down and, and you know, give them a solution. She's like, yeah, absolutely. You're hired. <laughs> Little that I know, man. This is a, this is so good, you know. And 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 uh, I wish I would have done this earlier. She comes to me and she's like, "Chris, based on what I've seen, how you work, I think we need to do this. We need to do that." And she's actually telling me what to do. And I'm like, "This is genius. Thank you." And you know, I guess she, she's like, "What else can we do?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, we need to do this." You know, and she started like telling me what 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 things to do. I was blown away. And 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 so. I'm glad that you know I was able to hire. I, I keep telling everyone, you know, get a virtual assistant. It's the it's 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 it for the for the money that you will pay someone locally, you pay a fraction of it. And there's very skilled people out there. And I think this is also another thing, you know, technology now allows us to really have a big pool of candidates across the world. You mm -hmm. know, we have we we can have uh, you know. People in Latin America or in the Philippines or in India or wherever, you know, and high, high talent, like really good people that know what they're doing. And at a fraction of the cost, it's a win win. Absolutely. As long as they're willing to work and they do good work and everybody's happy. A hundred percent. And the business <laughs> is growing. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, now going towards marketing. Mark, talk about your marketing strategies, any successful, if you have any secrets, maybe one secret that you have, you don't have to give away everything, but a little bit totally. of, a little bit of marketing stuff. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Michael, no, in, you know, it, it's all about, you know, in court, you know, of course, you know, the people how to do it. It's, it's my marketing is very simple. Um, when I started, right, like, let me, let's go back a little bit and how I end up kind of, you know, with my current strategies. So when I started, I didn't know nothing about marketing. All I knew, it was posting ads on Craigslist. That was my bread and butter. Um, then Craigslist starts charging money to, to post on that. And actually, that was a good thing because before there was a lot of uh, scams and a lot of uh, uh, overposting of the same thing. When they started charging money, that without people who are not willing to invest. And I'm like, I'm going to keep investing in that. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, it, from there, that was my first thing, Craigslist. I still post on Craigslist religiously. Every day, $5 a day, $100 a month, I get jobs from there. The trick here is posting your, your prices on the ad. If you don't post your prices on the ad, you get more calls. But a lot of these calls are really people who are looking for the cheapest service. So what happens? You get the call, you, you talk with them five, 10 minutes, and then you get to the price and I'm like, oh, that's too much, right? So the trick here is posting your starting prices, right? The standard pricing starts from this, deep cleanings from this, move-ups from this. If the person is calling you, 
they already saw the price, so they're more likely to purchase from you. So that's one one tip I can give you guys today. But then from there, I was like, well, what else can can I do? Uh, at the time, I'm sure everybody gets calls from Yelp. <laughs> uh, a, a representative from Yelp called me. He's like, hey, Chris, we're getting you know, a lot of searches in your area for your services. We'll give you $300 in credit if you spend another $300 in, 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 in ads. And I'm like, that sounds like a good trade. So I did that. And it worked. It really worked right now. So actually, so so uh -huh. so at the time it worked. I actually was able to get a lot of businesses uh, in online bookings from Yelp because I will I will run the campaign and I'll I'll send people to the website so they can just book themselves. Unfortunately, the reviews on Yelp are very tricky, and you know bad reviews will stay there forever. The good ones will get filtered. And over time, I just got tired of that. I, I was really like, hey, you guys are just like blackmailing me. <laughs> I don't like that. So I stopped running running ads on, on them. Um, and I think it was two years or close to three years now that Google local service ads came about. And I got an email from, from Google saying, hey, we're launching a new, a new service in your area. And the way it works is you get charged per, per, per call. Uh, I was like, I like that. So I signed up for it. Up until today, that is my number one source of business, Google local service ads. So what I like about this is that, you know, the customer is ready to purchase. So they search, you know, house cleaning services near me or, or something along those lines. They see your ad at the top, they click and they call. And then we have it, we have it on the phone. For me, honestly, it's, 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 it's best to have them on the phone. You can send them to the website. Great. But a lot of people they get scared on the pricing, right? When they start playing with the with the with the booking from, and then they might get you know turned off. But if I have them on the phone, I can negotiate. I can say, hey, what's your budget? That's that's my number one key. Um, uh, people are like, oh, you know, they say it's, it's you know it's too expensive. They they hang up. Don't let them go. My my secret question is always when I give them someone the price. Let's say the quote is three hundred dollars. And the customer like, oh no, no, that that's that's too expensive. Thank you. I'm gonna call. Like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you something. What's your budget? That opens the 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 conversation on their set, on their end, right? Oh well, my my budget is two hundred. Okay. How about let's do something. Let's meet in the middle, right? Let's do two fifty and let's get you on the books. Five out of ten times, man, they 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 see that you know they 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 gave some income something back. So hey, let's meet in the middle. Let's get going. Oh, you know, still too much. Okay, well, can we do 220? You know, that is, for me, something is better than nothing. Yep. And and so I'll rather keep my, my my cleaners happy, even if I make just a teeny bit, a tiny bit. I'm always winning, even if it's, you know, 50%, or sometimes I have to take, you know, the uh, the, the 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 heat on my end. Mm -hmm. oh, no. But I keep my cleaners busy, and they make money, and I make money. So that's my secret. Don't let them go. You know, like literally when they're about to say, well, thank you. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> What's your budget? Yeah. Okay. X. Let's meet in the middle. So and basically then... just keep the conversation going once you got them. And not, not, not everybody is going to be calling all the time. And you mentioned, you know, five out of 10 times they'll accept, you know, mm -hmm. meeting you at some point. You know, somebody might watching this who doesn't have a cleaning business, who doesn't understand you know, that 50% rate mm -hmm. on people who would normally go, that's at least 50% more business that you have, even though you negotiate it down. Yes, it's less, like you said, less profit for you. But if you consistently have less and less business and your cleaners or your providers have less and less jobs to do, mm -hmm. they're going to start looking elsewhere. So Absolutely. with you being, you know, proactive and being like, if I could at least get these people in and keep my providers busy with work and they're getting paid and I'm taking less, you mm -hmm. know, you could put your time elsewhere and a little bit more and try and get that money back. But with, with what you did there, I feel like not, not many people that I've spoken to business owner wise in the service industry, they do other things, but that's, you know. It's something so simple as that, you know, just 
negotiating a little bit. And I think that's the car salesman and, you know, you know, being in that industry previously and, you know, everybody wants the best deal. Nobody's going to be like, you know what? I want to pay more for exactly. where I could get the same thing over here for less, you know, okay. people always want the best price. And with you doing that, you know, like you said, with Craigslist, Mm -hmm. so post I post my pricing on there just so people could see I could weed out the people who are you know not even close. bottom you know like I want I want the cheapest price and then mm -hmm. um you're getting the people who are actually wanting that business or wanting that service but they're still trying to reach out so I think those two things that you said there are just really key for you know somebody who's looking to start who's not you know marketing savvy not business savvy but they really mm -hmm. want to do something. I think that's really key there is just as long as you could be a little bit of a people person, a little bit of talking and a, just a conversation, a simple conversation with somebody over the phone, you know, don't be salesy, don't be pushy, just mm -hmm. see what their needs are, you know, if they ask questions. ask questions, if they, you know, maybe they might have mixed up something on the website on the booking form and they accidentally click something that is a higher price point mm -hmm. that they don't necessarily need or they could add on later and uh -huh. save themselves that initial you know that first time service you uh -huh. could get that price lower just to lock them in as a recurring customer uh -huh. down the line. that's mm -hmm. that's key recurring that is customers is in the service industry is gold it really is gold. And and look, you you touch on something that I wanted to 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 add, right? Like uh, you know, some people might think, oh, you know, it, it's it's impossible to get a million dollar cleaning company. No, it's not. It really, if you if you do the math backwards, right? Or average ticket for a for a normal you know three bedroom two bedroom homes is around two hundred dollars, right? If you get one person to get you bi weekly service, that person is worth close to forty five hundred dollars. Per year, if you divide a million between that, you only need two hundred customers to get a million dollar company. Yeah. Anybody, anybody can get two hundred customers. You cannot tell me you can't. You can't. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and and honestly, you could. You don't necessarily even need to be in major metropolitan areas like Chicago, New York, L.A., Miami, Seattle, and like you could go even the suburbs the suburbs yes. of these big cities and you could do 200 in in those areas absolutely you know and when you when you when you put it like this like don't tell me you can get 200 people there's more than 200 houses around you i'm yeah. sure you can get 200 people it obviously it will not happen overnight but it will happen if you if you if you're consistent and if you stay with with, with it you will absolutely get to that number and if you don't necessarily want a full-fledged business you kind of want your own business work for yourself be your own boss and you don't mind doing the cleanings mm -hmm. you got an average ticket of 150 and you get you know six cleanings a week or 10 cleanings a week you have several thousand dollars a month a month in, in profit that six seven thousand dollars that you could be making monthly and yep. you're cleaning two houses a day five days a week mm -hmm. you're making good money it's a great money and you're working for yourself it, it's 100 percent. It, it really it's it's a very noble industry uh, uh, i must say you know it pays well if you know what you're doing you know get the good customers and you're touching the recording right even when they come for just one people get this um, how can i put it when do it, i love when people haven't cleaned their home because when we go and do it and then you see the difference from how they were and how they are they yeah. want to keep they want to keep that they probably hire you once but now they see their house like wow it looks clean i like it they're going to hire you more that's how me and my fiance are we have a cat we have a dog we recently went on vacation and when we came home we're like no you know let's let's get somebody in to clean and she mentioned it to me i was like the place doesn't look so bad they came by after they were done i was blown away i was like you know yeah. what Next time, I'm just not going to say anything <laughs> you you handle because it's, it really is true. You don't know how bad something is until you have, especially like I know a lot of cleaning services do those before and after pictures. Mm -hmm. When a customer sees that and they you provide that amazing service, mm -hmm. they're going to become recurring customers if they're not already. 
Absolutely. You you got that right, Michael. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so you've already mentioned a couple of things that make you stand out. Um, but what are what what are your key that you believe? What are the key things that make you and Queen B uh, cleaning stand out from your competitors? Oh wow, that's a good question and very easy to answer. Having a good customer service, it really sets me apart. You will not believe how many people you. I can call my competitors, like because you know every year I I call around just to see you know what other people are charging. So that's so why I'm in the market. You call a whole bunch of cleaning companies, they don't answer. And I'm like, what? Like, how can you have a business and not answer the phone? Yeah. If you answer the phone, you're already separating yourself from most people. And I think the problem with a lot of cleaning companies, you know, they want to do everything themselves. So, so they're doing the cleaning, and because they're doing the cleaning, they cannot answer the phone. This is where it comes handy, the virtual assistant. You can pay someone, you know, $6 an hour. Hey, make sure that no call is missed. Because one of those calls could be worth thousands of dollars. You never know. And as long as you have good customer service, I'm telling you guys, good customer service, customer service that responds quickly, right? Whether it's email, text, call, if you respond right away, people like that because, you know, we're in the, in the, in the era of like, we're used to click a button and get a something, right? Yeah. If they call a company and they don't answer, they will never call you again. You're done. You think like, but if you answer, you respond quickly. Oh, you know, they, they, they lean towards you. So I would say, just having an excellent customer service in my area, it's been setting me apart. Number two, having the booking form, because at that point, my business is open 24 seven. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, would you know off the top of your head, not exact, but ballpark, how many of your uh, competitors do not have an online booking form? I would say more than half of them. It's amazing. It, it, it's not even a quote form. That's crazy. Like, okay, don't let's let's say you don't want a booking form. Great, because I, I see a lot of people like, oh, but we, that's wrong because you're not seeing the house. How are you going to provide a, 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 a price without it? That's so old school. You know, at least have a quote form. Well, not even a quote form. You know, so yeah, looking at my competitors, I think not even half of them have a booking form. So, guys. I'm telling you, if you have a cleaning company or a landscaping company, whatever service industry, right? Put a booking form. People, the new generations are very used to just click, 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 and just pay. So do you believe that the the competitors that you have that don't have these online booking forms, do you believe they're from an older generation? I believe so. I think they're not really like uh, tech savvy persons. And then they become so like, oh, you know, and that's just like complicated. And the other thing is, is, is the um, the fear of, of selling a service without seeing a home. Uh, you know, I, I, I have, you know, a lot of people reach out to me and, and they're like, Chris, but how do you service without seeing the house? I'm like, that's what we have. That's why you, you know, take the time, you know, see how much a person can clean per, per hour. That way it can give you the parameters that you need to come up with a, with a rough estimate, right? If any case, you know, if someone books a job, and and then you get to that house and the house is bigger than it was described. Tell the customer, don't start a job. This is one key. Don't start the job because you've started the job and then you tell them, oh, it's going to take more and they're not going to pay it. The key is like, you get there, you can tell whether it's too big and it's going to take longer. You tell them, hey, thank you for booking online, but you know, the house is bigger. So we need to adjust the quote. This is true. Nine out of 10 times, the cost, you're already there. The customer will accept the price that you tell them. But, you know, being fearful of offering your prices ahead, it, it really is cutting yourself short, you know, for, for, for getting more business. You know, it, it's, it, I'm sure, you know, you, you've seen this in the industry, you know, uh, most cleaning companies, they have this, um, let's do in-person estimates. That is a time killer. You know, it, it wastes so much money and resources on that for a maybe, right? I used to do that. I used to go in person and 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 then I okay, yeah, I'll make an appointment. I'll be there tomorrow. I will drive, see the house in person, and you know, see all the all the details. I will give them the price. Oh, it's too much. Thank you. And I'm like, damn! I just drove around like crazy for a no. So yeah. it doesn't make sense. So in instead, you know, just put your prices out there. People will actually attract. Uh, you know, attract people because uh, you're transparent. You you you're not hiding anything. 
Absolutely. So now compare where you're at now with Queen Bee versus when you first started in 2015. How much time did you spend in the beginning versus how much you spend now? Towards Great the business question. per week. Well, let's let's go or per week. We could do a day or a week, whatever's easier for you. Okay. Yeah, fair question. I, so when we started, it was pretty much hands-on. So you know, we'll, we'll jump, you know, I guess working eight hours a day, sometimes ten or twelve hours a day, because we just want growing, right? And we're doing the cleanings ourselves. Um, and then I'll come back home and then I'll, you know, run, you know, run the payments and whatnot. So it's a lot of uh, hands-on, uh, uh, you know, time. And we really work, yeah, between 10 hours per day at the beginning. So, but, you, uh, so you and your wife, 10 hours mm -hmm. each, you would go, both go with the cleanings, take mm -hmm. care of the cleanings. And then mm -hmm. since it was just you guys, you're coming home, you know, taking payments or processing those payments counting up the money and putting mm -hmm. it all together. So mm -hmm. 12 hours. Okay. Exactly. And then, so I did that for like the first, first years Then I opened the restaurant and then I completely got distracted. Right. But then I came back and I started doing the same thing and doing the cleaning, doing the customer service, doing the, the, the payroll, all these different things. And it wasn't until I got my VA. This is what I'm telling you guys. This is it's one of my secrets. How VA the VA is going to be able to do so much more than you because they're not doing the cleaning. They just focus on doing customer service, collecting the payments, and then follow up. That, when you have that, then you have more time for you to make more money making activity. Um, so one key I can give you guys is having uh, having having processes. I'm gonna, I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna this is one of my favorite books. It's like the, the business playbook, and it really is. How to create systems, right? How to create SOPs, standard operating procedures. Why? Because if you if you take the time to document how to run, a, how to book a job, how to cancel a job, how to reschedule a job, and you make a little video, you create your library of how to do things. You give this to whoever, whether it's a local person or a virtual assistant, whoever. They gonna be able to see it how to do it. It's out of your head, right? Uh, and then, and then now the business can run without you. Very key uh, uh, thing to do. So fast forward to today. Now that I have, I have four VAs total, um, right? And then some do marketing, some do customer service, some do uh, outreach. You know, reaching out to to property managers, realtors. Um, between all of them, they have the processes, and they can see everything. Uh, uh, you know how it's done. Now. Today I only I only spend one hour per day on the on the business itself. Towards the end of the day, I get together with my VA and say, hey, you know, so how have everything gone? Oh, you know, we had a problem with one of the customers, you know, he's not paying or whatever the case. It's just to give me feedback and I tell, okay, let's do this, let's let's send them to collections, let's do this, let's do that. But it's really, really allow me to step out of the field and and really just just spend about an hour. It's not even an hour, it's, it's literally 30 minutes with her. And then, and then maybe another half an hour just just to check, see, you know, answer emails, you know, respond to to customers. Pretty much the job that I do now is is really making connections. So this is key. Um, you know, where you need to think about where can you sell your service, how you can partner with other people to to sell your services. In my case, property managers. What do they have? Properties. And what do they need? Waiting. Okay. Yeah. Listen. People love Starbucks here, especially in Seattle, man. <laughs> hey, whenever my VAs that are doing outreach, hey, you know, we, we're just trying to get the conversation going. If a, 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 a property manager responds positively, great. You know, let's meet in person. I go to their office, bring in a coffee. Hey, man, nice to meet you. My name is Chris. Here's my car. Here's a coffee. Nobody tells you no. That coffee cost me four bucks, man. Less than a call for local services that is 30 bucks now. You know, I break the ice. People enjoy it. Oh, this guy brought me a coffee. Of course. And then we get to chat. You know, that's all I do. I chat with people. I make these connections. They see, they see me, you know, like, and, and that opens opportunities. They might actually have a cleaning company already in place. Who cares? They already saw my face. And then I'm going to be touching with them like, hey, you know, uh, that's all it is, man. Right. Make connections with other businesses so you can cross-sell your service.
Excellent. Um, so now, since it's less than an hour a day, do you have other businesses? Are you focusing more time with, you know, family? Do you have any, what what else you got going on? It, it's funny, you know, with, uh, so a year ago, as of year, last year, I was just really focused on the business now and, you know, really, really optimizing everything, putting prop systems in place, you know, meeting people and whatnot. And, um, that's all I was doing. Really, I was not really, I, and I, I didn't want to get distracted or anything. I was like, I'm just gonna keep doing my thing. I lesson learn, you know. I don't wanna, I'm not, I'm not gonna open another bit. But then, um, a YouTube channel uh, approached me last year. It was, it was uh, you know, they're called Offflip, and this channel. I remember they reached out to me, and they're like, Hey, we saw that you offer Airbnb cleaning, and we want to interview a company that does Airbnb cleaning. Will you be open to an interview? And this is a it's a true story. I said no to them. Looking back, I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> because I was like, I don't want to, you know, it just didn't feel like I wanted to do it. And I was still focusing just on the business. But then I'm like, oh, like, why, why, why did I say no? I respond back to them. Like, you know what? Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I want the interview. Um, no thinking was just, you know, turning to another business. At the time, I was like, if I can put my my company name out there, that's gonna me that's gonna mean more traffic to the website, so it might turn into more customers. So I respond to the to to the guys so like, yeah, you know, I I actually changed my mind. I, I want to get interviewed, and they don't respond anything. <gasps> I was like, damn it, I let them go. You missed so it. last year, so so I remember the email came on March of of uh not last year, it was the year before actually. Yeah, I'm I'm getting mixed up. So it was, it was 2021. March of 2021, they I got the email. I said, oh, no. So I'm like, and then they respond. I'm like, oh, God. So just go back to my winning business, right? And I work from home. And right here on this side, I have a, a, a window that looks is through the front of the house. And, you know, we don't service people here. So only people who know me come to the house. And I'm working from here. And I see a Jeep and a Tesla, a white Tesla pulling up in my driveway. And I'm like, where are these guys? <laughs> and I opened the door and then his the you know, his name is Paul. Nice guy. I say, hey, so we're from Upwave. You were here to do the interview. I'm like, oh shit, I thought you guys didn't, you know, didn't want to do the like, oh yeah. Um, you wanna, you know, I'm like, right now? <laughs> Man, you, you watch that video, but like, I didn't, I'm like, I'm not even wearing a uniform because they didn't tell me they were coming. Um, they were they were literally show up. And How did they find your address. Huh? How did they find your address? Well, it's in my website, so at the bottom. It, okay. Uh, okay, I see. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you want to talk about? I was like, well, just show us around how you clean the Airbnbs and, you know, the tools and then some tips that you want to give people. I'm like, okay. So because they caught me so off guard, you know, I'm like, just going to tell everything. And I started, you know, like they're asking me questions and I would just tell them, oh, you know, this is how I do things. And they're filming me along the side. Um, the, the interview finishes, you know, they published the video a week after, um, the, they did the interview and I get an email from, from, from Nikita. Nikita, it's, it's another business owner there. And he's like, Chris, the video is going viral. There's a lot of people asking questions on the YouTube channel. Could you take a chance and, you know, respond to those comments? And I go back and I'm it's like, close to half a million views and like, in a week, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. And this is what happened. People were calling my business. Other business owners, you know, crazy. Australia, United Kingdom, uh, Germany. Uh, but most of them from the United States and some people from Canada. Chris, we saw your YouTube channel. You know, can, you, can I pick your brain to, to, to help me out with, with the Airbnb? Michael, at the beginning, I didn't think of it. I was just, you know, giving free advice, free advice. But the calls were just coming in and coming in, and they were like really like using my my business phone, like 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 customer service, like for like 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 consulting. And I'm like, I need to monetize this. So I was like, you know what? Based on the questions that people were asking me, I was like, I'm gonna create a course based on that. How to get customers? How to automate the company? And how to price your services? Bing, I can do that. So I literally record myself on Loom. Just like I do my SOPs, hey, do this to get customers. Do this for for you know booking quality. I I, I recommend them like hey, this is the software I use. This is how you set it up. 
this is this is how you put the prices. This is how you connect Stripe. This is how you run ads. And I run the you know the the program. Michael, I'm thinking if I make six thousand dollars out of this, I'll be the happiest man. Because really, you know, I'm just sharing my knowledge. Yeah. This is November. Okay, so so let's go back a little bit. So March, they they send me the email. I said no, whatever. August, they show up to my house. Uh, August goes, you know, late towards the end of August, the video goes live. Oct uh, September and October, I'm just giving free advice, free advice, free advice, nothing charity. And I'm, that's when I'm like, I need to monetize this. I create the course and I launch it on Black Friday. It was the last Friday of, of November. And I'm thinking, you know, if I make $6,000, I'll be, I'll be happy. And, you know, I, can, I can have some Christmas gifts for my, for my family. $6,000 in one day, my jaw dropped. I mean, in sales. Gosh. I was like, God. And then you just keep going. And, in your first day. In my first day. So I, I started running some Facebook ads. And I guess people already saw my face. And it was like familiar. Like, oh, the guy from the YouTube channel. And so that really helped me. So it was like a nice little push. And the YouTube channel sees one of my ads. And he's like, hey, Chris, so are, are you running this program? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, would you be interested in partnering it up together and 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 then and then recreate it for making it all more more professional? And I'm like, of course, because at the time, you know, like they already I already seen that they have a lot of reach. So it was a no-brainer for me. Like, let's do it. And um uh, we they came here we, we we recorded for like a month. It was not <laughs> I was like, I was overwhelmed because they had like cameras here and like following me around for like a full month. Um, but then we, they put together like a the course and and then and then they publish it and then it takes off because now you know they're running ads on Facebook, on YouTube, on Google, and then just people are just reaching out to me. And um I'm happy, you know, I'm I'm making good money now. I'm just fully automated. I'm like, wow, this this actually became a business on its own. I was not planning on, on creating another business, it was it really turned a business on its own. But then something happened. A lot of these people took the course, but they still have questions. They didn't know how to put things together. So they started reaching out, like, do you have a coaching program? I'm like, God oh, damn it, I don't, but, but, but how hard can that be? <laughs> so I said, okay, how can I put a program together? And uh, one of my students, actually one of my students who took the course, you know, um, it's always a good idea to, to partner with, with someone who can complement, you know, your skills. His name is Dalton. Shout out to him. He's like, actually, the way I, you know, he, uh, this is this is this is funny. He didn't approach me to become a partner or anything. He purchased the course, and then and then he's like, Chris, I have some ideas. You know, he has he has a cleaning business in in Fort Collins, Colorado, and then he's like, Chris, I have some ideas that I can help you to 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 optimize your your current uh, uh, marketing. I'm not gonna charge you anything. Actually, I want to thank you because of, of the of the tips that you gave me on the course. I want to give you something back. And for me, I was like, wow, thank you. I appreciate that. And so he comes to me and then gives me some tips and, and you know how to how to use my CRM better, you know, send, send some 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 marketing offers. And I'm like, hey Dalton, would you be opposed to create a program where you obviously you are very tech savvy? Uh I'm more like in the operations side of things. I think if we both get come together, we can create a, a coaching program. He's like, let's do it. And so now this, so this coaching, the coaching program was started last year on July. And, um, and so that's what I do now. So I have the cleaning company that keeps running. Uh, and then I, now I teach other people how to, how to open a cleaning business. Well, everything in between. I, I, I have a people that, that literally starting from scratch. I, I will say majority of my customers are, are are people who want to start. So I teach them how to do everything from A to C. Software, what you what software to use, how to set it up, how to how to run ads, how to hire people, and how to how to automate it. Um, and then another handful of people, it's more people who already have businesses, but they they still don't know how to put the technology together. You know, booking God, it's always been like. I tell everyone, like guys, I run my business from Booking Koala, and it's the best price. I I'm on the on the fifty seven dollar plan. Do you have another plan that is more beefy? But honestly, you cannot get any other software 
with the amount of 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 of, of uh, features for that price. You can't. It doesn't exist. When is he like, okay, but can you tell me set it up? Of course, I can help you set it up. Boom, boom, boom. Let's do it. And then from there, right now, so that's what I currently do. Oh my God, it's uh, so teach people, you know, how to, if they have a cleaning business, great. We we come and then we install, you know, the software that we use and we tell them how to use it. If they want to get into the business, we teach them exactly what it is about, how they can make money off of it, and then how to actually apply the knowledge. And so that's what I do, my friend. Excellent. That's That's amazing. So I guess a little side question is, are you currently a Booking Koala affiliate? Are you signed up as one of our affiliates? I we are we are so yes and and um actually if you if you get a chance when you get a chance for some reason like I see you know when I log into my account I can see a lot of people that have uh, click on the affiliate link mm-hmm. but uh, for some reason I don't it doesn't it's not counting towards the uh you know the the the, the, the credits. Meredith from time to time she has helped me you know like to um uh to. to She's like, oh yeah, I, I I take a look, you know, we'll give you a credit, whatever. So when you get a chance, you know, if if you can take a look, I'll I'll tell you this when because I have you on the I have you here. Uh, we are completely revamping the whole way the affiliate program is done in a much better way, and it oh, nice. should be released very soon. So any there might be, we're, it's always getting worked on. The whole development team is you know day and night working on new features and the, of the affiliate program and all that. So it could be with that. Great that Meredith is helping. I'm definitely going to check it out. So we will mm-hmm. take a look. But just so you know, the affiliate program and in the next couple months upcoming is going to be really something special. And okay. uh, for you, just kind of going back because you are a Booking Quality user as well as uh, an affiliate for us, mm-hmm. some people see that almost as two separate businesses because it's completely separate revenue as as you could see you have um you have this coaching program you have everything else you're getting people to sign up Mm -hmm. or booking qual and you're using your code so not only are you you know not only do you have queen b but you have the coaching program Mm -hmm. and now kind of mixed in you're using our affiliate link to get people to sign up. So you're getting incentivized because you're getting money too, but you're also showing them how easy it is because you're using it. You mm-hmm. are a user and you could help them set it up. So it's a lot quicker, you know, for you to get them in the door and get them set up. A hundred percent, you know, and this is, this is uh, guys, I'm telling you, you guys have a, an amazing software. Um, it's, very low entry. Anybody can afford fifty-seven dollars a month, man, and they can make so much money in return. Yes. It's crazy. And, and we still have a, a, the entry level pricing plan at twenty-seven dollars a month. Obviously, it doesn't have all the features of the next two plans, but you get. I feel like, not. I feel. I guess I could say this with confidence. Looking at some competitors over time, we have more features in our twenty-seven dollar plan in our That's basic. More- Entry level plan that some softwares have in their top tier plan, and it oh, it's mind blowing a little bit oh, that yeah. how those are still in business. But uh, everybody has differences, so we're just helping to keep going forward, get more people to switch over. And our biggest thing going forward is you know getting a new generation of people to start businesses from scratch using us from the get go and just seeing how easy it is. A hundred percent. And you know, we're just talking about cleaning. You have you guys were genius when you come in like let's just focus on any home service industry. Another one that we want to actually start getting into it's um, landscaping and, and, and carpet cleaning because it's funny, most of these people who we are teaching, either their husband or their cousin has a landscaping company or a carpet cleaning company. It's like can you do this? Of course, Booking Cola will absolutely help you to do this. As a matter of fact, um, you know, we just help a, a landscaping company in Wisconsin to install a, a Booking Cola. So they're super happy. You know, that, Where, I and, got and, I got chills just thinking about that. Just because it's you know, we obviously will, we will help anybody who emails us and has questions. But for us, you know, 
this June is going to be our five year mark of being released. And just kind of looking back throughout the five years to be able to say that our customers, Mm -hmm. our customers are helping new customers get Mm -hmm. set up that we have no idea about. This is the first Mm -hmm. time I'm hearing about, you know, we've emailed back and forth a little bit about the interview, but I had no idea what you were going to say. And I had no idea that, you know, you're even helping potential users they're not even users yet but they're potential users to get signed up with us and just going like that so for anybody who's going to be watching this if you're not you know necessarily looking to start a a service-based business yourself you could sign up to become an affiliate and just learn ins and outs about the software and you can make tons of money just getting people to switch over or sign up or whatever it may be there's there's plenty of ways to make plenty, money plenty of ways to make money you guys really thought about everything you know and 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 honestly i think this is the future you know being able to put this technology in what is what i consider boring businesses you know carpet cleaning land care all these are like old school businesses that are very resilient you know they're, they're they they keep growing even in you know, recessions, pandemics, and they just keep growing. If you put technology in those businesses, they explode even more. So the the opportunities are endless for a lot of home services. Exactly. A lot of people, you know, especially I'd say the 18 or 16 to about 30-year-old demographic, a lot of them are, you know, product, drop shipping, stuff like that. But one of the biggest problems with those is the moment you make a sale, and if you're make if you're selling something specific, let's say this mug, for example, you sell the mug once, it's how many mugs can you sell to the same person before yeah, exactly. that customer is tapped out? With That's the right. business, there's a reason they've always been around. They're not gonna die. There's always gonna be people who don't want to clean. There are going to be people who are very busy and can't walk their dog all the time. And when they're at work, they need somebody to walk their dog. We have people who start dog walking services using book. Right. There's, you know, mobile Oops. car wash. So people are mobile coming, car- coming, coming right. to your home to clean your car. You know, there's just so many ways. And our biggest thing was always, you know, let's not make it, you know, very cleaning specific. But yeah broad but also give them specific features that will help you know that industry like we know with the moving industry we That's need another. we need you know starting point and ending point you know and also all which is something that's coming up uh route optimization oh yes there are you know You've got all these different addresses. What's the best way to, you know, get these scheduled and how to go? That's coming as well. We have so many things in our roadmap that are coming that we are so excited about. I I don't want to give too much away because, you know, people, developers are going to be saying, man, why are you (laughs) You're going to be bugging us about, hey, I saw this on the video. He's already talking about it. Where is it? I'm not giving a timeline. I can't give a timeline. Right. But it's coming. We know we hear the biggest thing is we hear you guys. We hear our customers. We're all the owners, all three of us, me, Philip, Vivek, Meredith, you know, all of us. We're always in the Facebook community group. There's a Reddit uh, community group, Twitter. We read everything. We see all your comments. We appreciate all the feedback, whether it's good, bad, whatever. We listen. And we want to go forward with that. But big oh. thing, other competitors of ours with the software space, we feel like they got stagnant. They didn't listen. They, they don't they, listen to their customers. They're just happy with the money they get. And, and that's, it. that's it. They're they're not taking into account why they're in business. It's because of you guys. It's because of the mm-hmm. customers. It's I love that we're in in business is because of you. So the only way we can keep going is if you guys are happy. So if you guys are telling us, hey, we need this, we need that, it's always, we're always going to say yes. It's just going to take time and we prioritize it. So 
that's one thing that I just kind of wanted to let you know that Michael, we're always you, listening. You got me excited there because truly, when you mentioned the all product optimization, that's one of my major pain points right now. Because it's true, you know, you have so many jobs like how you can make it so you drive you drive the least amount of possible. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that makes more profit, right? And you, oh my God, seriously, <laughs> thank you so much for giving me that sneak peek of what's coming. I'm excited for it. And of course. you, you know, you are the only company that I've seen that actually listens to people. I get your emails whenever you guys are like, um, you know, releasing something. All the time is like big releases. We added this, we added that. I'm like, yes, well, come on, I'm like, let me keep up with it because it's a lot of changes. But, but I love it, man. I, I I really think you guys are uh, are really special. You have you listen to the customer. And I think that's that's really what different yourself from other 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 softwares that are similar. And what it's for for us, you know, for me thinking about it and going kind of to the beginning of this interview, um, that moment when we really, you know, after we sat down and said, hey, you know what? we really do need to listen to them. This is our, this is going to be what's going to keep us ahead of everybody else in the software space. And, and going forward is listening to customers. And right when you signed up, when you said, Hey, I need the Google calendar, you know, that was basically the time frame where we were like, it's go time. We're going to listen to you. So you're kind of one of the first people who got to see that, you know what, we're going to, yeah. we're going to listen to you, you know? I so, love it, man. A couple more questions um, for you here. What, I mean, throughout this whole interview, you've kind of said everything that you love, but initially kind of exactly what drew you to using us? What was, what was it? Let's go back to that. What what drew you into having you Very, over? Two, actually two things drove me, drove me. Kind of, sorry to cut you off, but besides that, you know, the payment processor from the last software. Just kind of, if it, if it's going to be more centralized to the software feature wise stuff like that. Yes, two things. Uh, the first one, the features, like you mentioned earlier, you have more features than any other software out there. Seriously, and that was back then. Now you have even more. So the features was one big one for me. The second one, it was a no brainer. I was paying at the time one, no, it was two nineteen at the month, and. You know, you have the 27, the, I think 20 is 29, and the 57, and then one. 27, 57, 197. There you go. For me, the 57, it had more than enough for what I needed. So it was a combination of the features, the amount of features that you had, plus the price. I was like, man. And then especially when you when you when when I got the email, like, now we have calendar view. I was like, I'm, I'm done. Let's do it. <laughs> Excellent. And then. Um, I guess we kind of touched on that with what we were talking about just a minute ago. Um, maybe once I ask this question, what is one feature that you wish you, or what is one feature that we have that you could not live without? That's the first part. And then what's one fish feature that you wish we had that we don't. So maybe if it's going to be route optimization, let's, if there's a second one, for that mm -hmm. what you could have but what's one of your absolute favorites that that you 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 can't live without in the software that you use for me is the is the is the unassigned folder okay that right there because whenever we book a job just put them there and then my 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 providers they they just grab it right so they're always just like boom 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 first come first serve the unassigned folder is genius because before when, when the other software I was using, I had to assign it manually. And then sometimes they're like, oh, I can't, I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm tapped out. Having the unassigned folder has so much flexibility. If, in a way, you guys created the Uber app for, 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 uh, for, for the industry because a job comes in and then it gets a notification to your providers and then whoever grabs it, boom. That is one major thing I cannot live without. One, because of that, you know, like, you know, the ability of just sending, but number two, very, very important for me, the ability to stay compliant with the government, right? You can, when you work in those contractors, you cannot have control over the schedule, but if you have an app that puts them a notification, it's up to them to grab it, yeah. then you are compliant. So that right there allows 
so many people to work with the subcontractor model without getting in trouble with the IRS. So that is something I cannot live without. That is something I, I have to have. So, so with, with the way our smart scheduling within the software, I could spend probably more than already what we've talked this long time-wise about just in the smart scheduling because there's so many different ways you could set it up. Um, so you basically have it set up where it's just assigned automatically to people if if they have the time spot open. But then you also enabled the unassigned folder where if it's in overflow and nobody really has availability to take it, it just automatically is going to go in there and you mm -hmm. can have your, your providers, you know, log in and they could browse through it or they also get the notification, hey, you know, new booking in the unassigned folder, you know, you have time off during this time, but you could grab it if you want and they can just hit accept and they have that extra job, which also, if you didn't have, you would lose revenue if nobody picked it up. But here, yeah, you're fully booked and it still might not get picked up, but there's the opportunity for it to be picked up and you're not losing that, that revenue. Uh a hundred percent. So that is what I cannot live without. Now, the other feature that I wish you got, but you already have it. It's, it's literally, but well, that's why I got excited. It was the route optimization. Like, how can I make it? So this is a problem I have when my virtual assistant, they don't really live here. And yeah, they can see the Google map and then see where the locations are. But sometimes, <laughs> you know, the drive time in between is too far away. So if you're going to have this, then that means, hey, you know, the system will automatically uh, optimize it in a way that we don't have to drive around as much. Excellent. So you already got what I was looking for. <laughs> so, right. Um, and then if you had another, what would be your, a second feature that you, you would like us to add that we don't have? Let me think about this one. Let's see. Yes, I do. I do know. And this is a good one. Some people don't want to book right away, right? They just want a quote. Well, we have a quote form. You have it. But then I think we need to have a more robust follow-up uh, feature on that. For me, the quotes, you know, they convert about 20% of quotes end up converting. But I truly believe that what increased that number is the follow-up, right? Being more more consistent, up to seven touches, boom, 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 over and over until they tell me, leave me alone, or, or yes, I'm going to buy from you, okay. right? So I think having a more um, robust part when it comes to quotes. So now we have the booking form, but now, okay, the quote form, let's, let's make it more, more aggressive and say, whoever comes in, hey, let's follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, so we can, we can, we can, increase the conversion rate okay excellent well i'll make sure to go over that and then i do believe there are some things that are in there that we can within the other modules on the next tier there are some things that you can do in there so we okay. could talk about that at a later date but i will definitely bring this to the development team and be like hey here's you know Cristobal asked us to get a little bit extra in there. So let's see what we can do. I have another one that I think this is really good one. If you I don't know how hard it, I mean everything is hard, right? It just but this is just to put you in this, on, on 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 idea. If you could somehow create an open phone inside inside software, you already guys connect with Twilio, right? So Twilio will send text offers and uh, the, the notifications by text and whatnot. But if you could have the phone system in there, so when people call and then you will have, you know, the, the profile pull up of that person, then you know who you're talking to right away. Imagine for on a virtual assistant standpoint, you know, whoever's in like get the phone rings, you have your open booking call open, like boom, bingo, it's, it's, it's there, right? Uh, and then you can, you, I, I will get rid of open phone. <laughs> and then, and then, and then you use the phone system. Honestly, I don't know how hard could that be, you know, just to create a a, a a soft phone. I think that's what it's called inside the inside the app. That would be amazing, guys. If not, if we can't just build it out, what we could do always is look at 
making an integration, like we have that list of integrations with other people, with other softwares. For temporary, we can maybe make an integration where it would do the same. Mm -hmm. And over time, we could add it in. That would be good. Uh, guys, that would be one that I would absolutely love. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So, Cristobal, final question for you. What are going to be some words of encouragement for somebody watching who is currently on the fence about, you know, starting a service-based business, whether home cleaning or any other industry, or who has no idea, you know, what they kind of want to do? Why should they go with this route? What are what would you tell them um, if this mm. whole, if this whole interview was not enough? What mm -hmm. would be the final things that you would tell them to be like? You know what? Go ahead and make that jump and start. Good question. I th I think for anyone who's still in the fence, they still don't know. For example, they're like they heard about it. They 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 think they're thinking about it, but they still like overwhelmed by the what if what what if. Looking back. You know, myself, you know, I left a very well-paying job with benefits and whatnot. And, and I had a family to feed. So it was really scary for me to make this jump and like, what if it doesn't work? Um, I would say, give it a shot. You know, you don't know if you don't know. Like, if you don't try, you don't know if it's going to have work. But I guess fear, having fear of trying something new really kills a lot of potential, you know, excellent businesses out there. I will say, start small. Look for something, you know, so, you know, like, look, look around in your area, you know, like you said, you know, you know, you don't have to be in a big metro area. Look in your city, you know, do a little bit of research. You, you have tools at your disposal. Do a quick, you know, Google in your area, whether you're offering landscaping or house cleaning or carpet cleaning, you know, see what other competitors are doing. Call them. If they don't answer, you have a big opportunity right in front of you. Because that means nobody's answering. You can create a website. You guys provide that. Booking Koala comes with a website, booking form, whatever industry you want to get in, and start running ads. I promise you, very low entry with a infinite amounts of potential return. But if you don't give it a shot, who knows? You know, so I would say, give it a shot. You know, give yourself an opportunity to try something new. Right. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work. You can go back to whatever you're doing, but at least you tried it. I Excellent. think I would say, you know, give 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 yourself a shot a shot and don't don't cut yourself short. I think I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> yes, I think you know I really I really think that you know the fear of of failing stops a lot of people who who knows might have a, an excellent business. But the the fear of failing stops them. Who cares? You know, I you know if it fails, try again. If it needs this, you need to try again. And if it doesn't work, you know you can always go back. You you know there's always options. Excellent, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All Very right, well. Cristobal, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Pleasure.